Alrighty, so let's get started. Yeah. I'm Jacob. We're uh, the Earth Moon Earth communication using lower modulated signals. No, uh, I'm Wally. I'm, I'm Ben. I'm Pat. Here's the yeah. Yeah. So our project goals. So uh, what we want to do is achieve one-way communication with Earth Moon Earth uh, communication with a lower modulated signal, and also complete an echo test with Earth Moon Earth communication with a lower modulated signal, and also acquire a ham license. And uh, shown below is the um, the block diagrams of what our system is going to look like. That top one is for the echo testing, where we have the uh, uh, transmitting laptop going into a um, a 500 watt, uh, watt amplifier, and then it's going to be sent out with our 8.5 meter dish antenna, and then it's going to reflect off the moon and then be received with a different hack RF and uh, through the preamp. And then underneath that is uh, again the laptop with the SDR going out of the uh, hack RF transmitter and then out the uh, amplifier again, and then uh, it's going to go out the 8.5 meter dish antenna, and then we're going to receive it in Alaska with the 9.1 meter dish antenna. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so just for like a background, LoRa, the way we're using LoRa, we're using spread spectrum modulation, which basically means our data is encoded on the series of up chirps and down chirps. And the start, like the set of up chirps that are happening at the beginning are kind of like a preamble just so like the signal knows, hey, this is where the message is starting. And the reason we're using this is because it allows for low power and long range transmission. Mm -hmm. And uh, LoRa is mostly used for like information of things uh, application. So it's a pretty low data rate, but you can get, um, you can use it with like low power and uh, get pretty, pretty far for IoT purposes. And then for uh, what is Earth Moon Earth communication? So Earth Moon Earth community propagation or moon bounce. Um, it uses the moon as a passive like ref reflector basically. So like it's hit, the signal's hitting it and then it's kind of getting like the, the weak reflected signals are getting off of it. So like one of the issues that we're gonna run into is like there's a huge path loss. Uh, there's Doppler shift as well that we have to account for. Um, and it works better with small bandwidth, which is uh, not too great for LoRa because you know it uses a larger bandwidth to modulate the signal. And the moon also needs to be in a, a good position. So you got to pay attention to that. And this is a moon table, which essentially like measures the declination and the uh, extra loss added by the position of the moon in the sky. Um, the more important thing to take out of this is the declination, because you know if the if the moon's so low that like you're trying to transmit the signal through the tree line, you know that's going to be a lot more loss than uh, like the extra like two dB. So uh, IoT is the Internet of Things, uh, defined by a network of physical objects embedded with systems or sensors, software, and other technologies. And this basically means that uh, de like devices communicate with each other. So how we plan to use this, or not plan to use this, but one application of uh, of LoRa could be to send like small, low uh, information signals to communicate with other devices. So Thundercats like to use the example of say your fridge is not running. So you can have like a one or a zero, one the fridge is on, zero the fridge is off. So you can send a simple little message to another device to say that your fridge is not on or is on. So one potential application we thought about using. Um, specifications for this project, we decided to use 1296 megahertz because the frequency has a lot less path loss compared to 432. Um, our hardware, we are using a Hack RF one which is an SDR, and we will be using this alongside a computer to generate and transmit our LoRa signal. And this is better because it allows us to like specifically pick all of our parameters and adjust them. Um, for the echo testing, we will use this for receiving as well because it does have a transmit and a receive side. And it has a max output power of one milliwatt. Um, we're using a GPS reference that gives us a very stable sine wave to use as the reference. The Hack RF has an input for a reference, and it helps lessen the effect of the Doppler effect because it gives us a very stable sine wave to block onto. Uh, the amplifier we're using a 500 milliwatt, or sorry, 500 watt amplifier for transmitting, and a low noise amplifier for receiving. And then antenna, we have 
or Dr. Katz has <laughs> a eight and a half meter dish antenna that he is very nicely letting us use. Yeah, that's a picture of it. And that's a picture of yeah. Dr. Katz's antenna. And kind of like a little tidbit about why we chose to go the SDR approach rather than, because, uh, you know, most of the time when you're using LoRa, you just buy a LoRa chip and uh, use that. But with the SDR mm -hmm. approach, we found an SDR software that allows us to uh, control the bandwidth of the signal as well as the uh, frequency because the uh, lore is generally done on the ISM bands, which, you know, we, we wouldn't need a ham license to, to transmit on, but it's a lot of noise on those bands. Um, so that, that's kind of why we went with the SDR approach because we could control a lot more about the signal and we also wouldn't need a transfer to, to, uh, to convert it up to 1296. So SDR Angel is a software that we decided to use. Uh, Professor Justin helped us find those on one of our advisors. Uh, it's open source. Uh, it's a uh, transmit and receive, which you can determine just by clicking a simple button. Uh, and also has many different plugins that we can use. So um, one is the LoRa plugin that allows us to modulate using LoRa and also receive the LoRa signals. And also the allows great control over different parameters of the signal, such as the frequency and the spreading factor, bandwidth, etc. And we can also send a simple little message, a text message that we can send and receive using this software. Yeah, and the, the reason like why we chose this is because we could control the bandwidth. Like we can bring it all the way down to like 300 hertz, which is which is nice, which we couldn't do with the uh, the LoRa chip. And so that's going to uh, come into play, come into factor like for our uh, path loss equation. So they're going to be nicer. Uh, with that and the spreading factor as well allows us to kind of create like a more clear signal to re on the receiving end. And this is from when we were doing some testing. This is Dr. Katz's hand setup that we'll be using. Um, yeah, uh, the really the only thing that we're, we would be using from this is um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, in case you were wondering what a setup looks like. Yeah, <laughs> it's in, it is in his face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is the yeah the dish antenna that we're using as you can see it is huge it's recycled from bell labs yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so when actually, i heard got it <laughs> <laughs> when i heard eight meter dish i like, thought oh that sounds big when you're yeah. there in person, yeah when like, oh, yeah when you're in person it's no, you like it's very imposing no it's a mesh dish yes mm -hmm. wind blowing oh yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah and yeah so this is the uh uh, this is a close-up of the the 1296 feed horn. So the the this top one is a 1296. Down here is a 432, which we we were thinking about using 432, but we're going to get better uh, path loss equations with the 12 operating on 1296. And here's the the uh, low noise amplifiers for the when we receive the signal. And here it is when we're transmitting. No, that's I'm pretty sure it's 1296. Yeah, because because we uh we tested on that. Driving this with 500 watts on your guys. Oh, no, that's more than the power after it's using the dish. What was the question? Yeah, the radiated power after the dish with 500 watt input. Um, I that's a lot more than 500 watts. Yeah, yeah, the dish is sure. Yeah, it's so quite, quite nice. Mm -hmm. Hot term, yeah, you're the equation of the birds of <laughs> yeah. 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 And the fact that the only other group to do it, I think, was basically an echo test from Holland. Yeah. So I think he kind of just wants to like set a record of yeah. how far he could transmit it. Yeah, so I, we, I think the distance. So if we set the record record to Alaska, that's going to be harder <laughs> for someone else to beat. Yes. Yeah. I mentioned yeah. that you happen to have the people from the computer fair. Um, oh yeah. Those mm -hmm. folks are based out of Oklahoma, so they oh. got their. Didn't mean to just track out the computer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We've also talked to them. Al had a ulterior. 
Yeah. You've also talked to people at the DBRA and yeah. you might possibly try and communicate with them. Yeah, because because there is a chance because the uh, mic in Alaska, it, it snowed real bad in a lot like surprise. You know, yeah, like two but, yeah the his, his antenna is like completely covered in snow. So there, there's a chance that they, we might need it. Out. Oh, really? I think okay. he just is working and getting it dug out. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, for the um to test our receiving uh system, we did some sun noise testing recently where uh basically uh we pointed the the antenna where you set up like our receiving system with the SDR and everything uh with mm -hmm. his uh his antenna and then we pointed it at like a cold region of the, the sky basically where the sun isn't. <laughs> and the the sun radiates frequencies at like all all different uh wavelengths. So you can uh what we do is we point it at a cold region of the sky, which is kind of shown in that. That little blue area, that dark area, is picking up like no, uh, no transmitted power, yeah. and you slowly just bring up the antenna to look at the sun, and then so as you can see, like we got a lot of green in there, so we're we're receiving power from the sun, so we know that this is definitely working. So we can go ahead and try to uh, do Earth Moon Earth, Earth Moon Earth communication with it, or echo testing, right? And then we did try to. Um, to actually send some signals with our uh, SDR, but we found out that uh, Dr. Katz's 500 watt amplifier requires a one watt output, but the SDR doesn't do that because we we found out later that it was a one milliwatt output. <laughs> and so, essentially, we needed um, another amplifier. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna hook up another amplifier. We're so gonna put an amplifier into an amplifier. Really, it's not really a big problem. They have mm -hmm. stuff that they just kind of Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You don't even have to build it. You can just buy stuff. Yeah. Well, we have. Yeah. This, this is our fix. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he had one lying around. And oh, yeah. 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 Does it get very hot, though? Um, it got a little hot when we were testing yeah. it. And uh, unfortunately, the fan doesn't work. So we're going to have so to wire it. Yeah. 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 But we tested it for about an hour. And it it still, you can still touch it. It was just kind of warm. Yeah. So, so. Yeah. So this is the um, the testing that we did. He gave us a 25, uh, like a one milliwatt to 25 watt amplifier at, at 1296. And so that, that's a little bit overkill. And we had to test it on the spectrum analyzers, which were, um they, the max you could do was 20 dBm. And so 25 watts is a little bit over that. So we uh, basically set up a lot of cable loss between it. We had like 200 feet of cable <laughs> yeah. between the yeah. amplifier and the uh, spectrum analyzer yeah. so that the loss would <laughs> so we could read it without blowing it up yeah <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. it, was, it was real old cable too yeah, <laughs> yeah. like it was yeah. it was some sketchy cable yeah it was, it was the one instance where you wanted cable loss <laughs> yeah. oh yeah but it, as you can see we had the s21 parameters down at the right there so we had about 24 uh, db of loss and then we went ahead and like uh, after we calculated everything, this is the with the with the loss we got about um, nine dBm, which is like 0 0.01 watts. And then we did we did the math, and it should be about like three or four watts. So now we're now we're ready to test. So that's the the current where we're at with the project right now. Good. And that's it. Any questions? Do you guys are all these presentations going to be available online? Uh, I know the recording is. I don't know if the actual presentation is. I, I have I'm assuming we can send our slides in. Yeah, I, 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 I got no problem with doing that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we do have a website. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What was the question? Do you intend to do any ongoing communication with the system? Is this just a function? I think, I mean, I think once we get it working, it's kind of like going to be going to be it because like it's not like super practical to use as like an actual like a kind like of like the a, data yeah. rate's very yeah. low. Oh, yeah. So like yeah. we're yeah. going to be transmitting hopefully a few words. Yeah. 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 Was it works? But yeah. like the like, for example, like the J, like the JT software. Is yeah. Better. Yeah. There, there's yeah. There's better ways to, uh, to communicate. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
Um, a little bit. I think that we, we have a lot of equations where we can yeah, calculate yeah. all that to, to figure it out. We didn't include that in the slides. But yeah, I know for the, um, actually the Holland group, they, like, they, when they sent out their, their, uh, uh, signal, they were able to receive it and then create like a kind of like a map using the free, like the, the changes in bandwidth of the surface of the moon, which is pretty cool to see. So hopefully we can try to recreate that okay. when we do our echo testing. Um, the yes. end of April, yeah, yeah. it's similar yeah. in the beginning of May. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Yeah.